What's up guys, Jeff here. Uh, welcome back to the weekly update right here on Deco Creek TV. Happy Wednesday morning to everyone. Uh, so we got a great episode uh, lined up for you guys today. Um, we can see we got a lot of stuff on the table. Um, we're gonna, uh, today's episode is gonna be 10 tips on stamping concrete in cold weather. Um, you know, it's not too bad out there today, but man, with coming up here in the next week or two, um, it's really gonna start to change and uh, we're gonna need to know how to handle um, some cold weather. So we just have a few things that we've learned over the years that might help you guys out. Uh, so the first one is um, adding extra cement to your concrete. And so this is just as simple as um, just bumping your cement content up a little bit. You guys are normally used to pouring um, a six sec mix, for example, and it's starting to get a little bit colder and you're not really wanting to put any accelerator in it just yet. Um, so just adding that little uh, bit of extra cement, use that half a sack of cement is gonna be um, something that'll just get that stuff just to go a little bit faster for you and um, you'll be able to get to it and, and stamp it just a little bit sooner so extra cement content um, the next one is going to be accelerators and uh, this is obviously um, one of the biggest things here is use an accelerator speed up your concrete and uh, this is what probably the most good you can do for speeding up your concrete and trying to handle those cold weather conditions. And um, I got uh, two things on the table here. Uh, first up is uh, the calcium chloride flake. And next we have the non-chloride um, liquid accelerator. And so um, definitely some differences there. Anybody who's ever poured calcium flake, you know that this will do the most to uh, setting your concrete off um, than anything else you can do. Calcium flake is going to accelerate it faster, better. Um, you're just going to get the most effect out of that. Um, the non-chloride accelerator, on the other hand, um, you know, it's going to go a lot slower. It's not going to do as much as this did, but it will be a little bit more forgiving, be a little more manageable on those days where, um, you know, you thought it was going to be cloudy and 40 degrees and lo and behold, the sun comes out and it's 55 and um, you know, having the NCA in there, it was not gonna go as crazy on you as it would if you would have put calcium in that morning. Now, the biggest thing uh, when it comes to calcium flake and non-chloride accelerator is, again, we're talking about stamped concrete and um, whether it's stamped concrete or any decorative concrete period, um, it is not recommended to ever use calcium flake um, in decorative concrete. And that's kind of why I brought this to the table here this morning was just to talk about that real quick that um, we are not gonna use this stuff. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why as far as just um, how it's, what it's gonna make the concrete look like. It's gonna change the color of the concrete. Anybody who's poured calcium flake, even with gray concrete, you know that it just never turns out as bright. And um, it's always got a little bit more of a drab look to it, which again, you're pouring a driveway, no big deal. But uh, this is stamped colored concrete. So we do not wanna use calcium flake. We're gonna stick to strictly non-chloride accelerator. And um, you know, 2% non-chloride is gonna do for you what 1% calcium was going to, um, but this is just where we're at. We, we've got to use this. We do not want to use the calcium. Um, next up on the list is hot water, and this goes right with um, the accelerators here. And uh, so sometimes, um, you know, coming up um, here in the next uh, couple weeks, um, talk to your ready mix plant, and you know, everybody's different from different parts of the country, even different parts of Ohio, as far as when they actually start running hot water at the plant. And um, just the hot water itself and some extra cement can honestly do quite a bit for you. Um, but the other thing is just to make sure that you know what's going on at the plant. Um, you know, if you're using 2% non-chloride last week and they were running cold water and all of a sudden you just called in this morning and you ordered uh, your concrete with 2% uh, non-chloride, but they're running hot water this week, I'm telling you, it's going to be a whole different story. And um, that's going to uh, go off a lot faster than it did when they were running that um, that cold water. So, um, you know, we've also got these things. This has nothing to do with ready mix concrete, but this is a great way to heat water up on a job site. Um, you know, it's cold weather concrete. Everybody hates sticking their uh, fingers in the wheelbarrow to wash tools when it's cold outside. So uh, throw this guy in your wheelbarrow. Um, your wheelbarrow uh, won't ice over on you, but it'll also give your tool washers um, some warm fingers when they go to wash their tools off there. So trying to pour in the morning. Now, this is something that we talk about all year long with pouring decorative concrete. We always want to pour that first truck in the morning. Um, we don't want to try to pour it two o'clock in the afternoon. Now, in the summertime, we say that because it's going to be hot at that time. The, the trucks are hot and the materials are all hot. And uh, so um, we don't like to pour in those late afternoons because we're trying to actually, you know, keep the concrete from setting up too fast. In this case, um, we do still want to pour before noon. And the reason for that is that, um, you know, it's going to take a while for this stuff to set up. Again, we're not using calcium flake. We're using non-chloride. Um, 
we're not gonna, we can't expect this stuff to uh, set up and stamp in the matter of a couple hours. And so if we wait till two o'clock to pour this time of year, now our problem is that um, it might not even be uh, still daylight when it's time to stamp and we might be out, be out there um, stamping in the headlights and nobody wants to do that. Uh, so just get your pour in early so you can get it stamped um, before dark. Um, the next thing is um, another really simple adjustment pouring at a lower slump. Um, you know, that can, we, we talk about this all year long also about, you know, pouring stamp concrete at a low slump, but right now it's even more important yet because the last thing we wanna do, we're trying to get this stuff to set up faster. We're trying to be able to get that concrete to the point where it'll hold our weight and we can stamp it. Um, why would we wanna add more water to it? That's only gonna slow things down. So uh, pour that concrete at a tighter slump than normal and that's gonna help you guys out also. Uh, next thing up on the list, uh, powder release. Um, this is one of those things that, uh, um, a lot of people tend to forget about uh, when it gets to be this time of year. You know, you're used to liquid, using liquid release and that's working great for you all summer long, although now it's a little bit colder and um, that release just isn't working quite as good anymore and you're getting a lot more pull up on your stamps and um, it's just not, not working out the way you had hoped it to powder release will go a long way in helping that problem. Um, so when you uh, stamp with powder release, it's, it's creating a, a barrier there where when that surface is still a little bit sloppy and it's just not drying out like it did in the summertime, liquid release just isn't working really, uh, right. Uh, give powder release a try because I'm telling you, it will make a big, big difference there. Um, next up on the list is color hardener. Um, so same idea, um, in the summertime, um, color hardener can be a challenge because it's adding more cement to the concrete and you gotta work it in and it's kind of drying things out a little bit. Well, this time of year, all of a sudden, um, we're trying to use up some of that moisture up on the surface and we don't want that, we wanna get rid of it. And so color hardener can go a long way in kind of you know using up um, some of that surface moisture and um, it'll just make things go faster and this is gonna be um, go a long way uh, in stamping in cold weather. The other great thing about using color hardener in cold weather is if you guys um, aren't used to using color hardener and you're trying to, um, you were actually looking to get into throwing color hardener, you didn't wanna try it two months ago when it was hot out, well now is a great time of year to throw some color hardener on your concrete and um, it'll be really, really forgiving. It'll be a lot easier to work in and uh, this is just a whole different ball game um, when it's cool like this throwing color hardener or so um, give that a try as well. Okay, so next up on the list is going to be covering your subgrade the night before. And everybody knows what this guy here is, a concrete blanket. Um, I know we've all used these, we all love them. Um, and uh, these are just around the corner. Uh, but in this tip, covering the subgrade, we're not even gonna use this to cover the concrete. We're actually gonna cover the subgrade with this the night before. Um, so, uh, you know, we talked about this a couple months ago about, um, you know, getting that subgrade a little bit cooler, wetting down your subgrade. Um, opposite of that. Now we're actually trying to keep our subgrade warm. So, you know, if it's down to 30 degrees last night and I have my subgrade covered up, um, I get there this morning, I'll be able to peel this off. And um, now all of a sudden it's a lot warmer. It didn't cool out overnight um, from the cool down of the temperatures. And that subgrade means so much in how concrete sets um, that, you know, just give this a try if you're worried about it. The next tip, um, this would be number nine, would be concrete covering your concrete with blankets. Now, I know this one can be tough. Um, a lot of people who have poured decorative concrete and used the concrete blanket, um, they got there, they left them on for a couple days, they came back, ultimately it, ended, it left a cure mark um, somewhere in the, uh, in the concrete. You know, it can do that on standard concrete. We all know what can happen there. Decorative concrete, it is different. And my biggest thing I'll say about that is if you're using integral color, um, definitely you wanna worry about that. You know, if you're covering up integral color, honestly, you need to be really, really careful. And um, you know, if you can actually wait till the next day to cover it up in that case, it would be a lot better. So be careful there. Although going back to our color hardener, I'm telling you, uh, I've never seen somebody cover up stamp concrete that they use color hardener on and had a problem with the cure line from a blanket. Um, so there is a big difference there. And that goes back to, you know, again, these things all tie together. Uh, that would go back to the color hardener also. The last tip is sealing next spring. Um, and so this is the big hang up is, you know, we're gonna, it's getting late in the year. We're gonna pour this concrete. We can get it stamped. Um, the weather's still good enough to do all that. But to say that that concrete's gonna cure out and we can really get a good seal on it before winter, sometimes that's asking a lot uh, to try to get that done this year. And it might not just even be physically possible. So just keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with pouring a uh, stamped patio this fall 
and then sealing it next spring. Uh, in fact, you know, when I used to pour a lot of concrete in the field, there was always at least a job or two every year uh, that we would pour in the fall and we'd go back the next spring and seal it. And again, I, I'd never seen that become a problem. I've never seen uh, the color fade away or anything bad happen to it over the winter. And again, especially with this stuff here, color hardener and powder release, I'm telling you, you guys can pour that um, in November go back in April, wash it off, seal it, and you guys are gonna be good to go. Please, if you have any questions on this, uh, drop them in the comment section below this video. Um, if you guys like this video and you guys find it helpful, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.